Hello guys, in this video I want to talk about top 15 relatively newer JavaScript array methods. Some of the methods may be familiar for, for you, but I still recommend to watch the video because I got some new things for you. Okay, the first method is every. The array basically accepts a callback and uh, evaluates true or false from the callback whether the element satisfies the condition or not. And the first line returns true because every element of the array is satisfies the condition is even and the second line returns false because there are elements which doesn't satisfy the condition is even and you see what is even callback does the second example uh, is that we have an array of objects and we want to check whether every person of the array has location new york and as you can see this evaluates into false because there are persons which doesn't have location new york Second method is sum. The sum basically is different from the every that it checks if there is at least one uh, element in the array which satisfies the condition. And as you can see, the first line evaluates into false because all elements into array are even and our callback is called is odd, which checks the, if the element is odd or not. And on second example, this evaluates into true because there are elements which is true. Second example, we have uh, the similar array and we are evaluating if the location is New York for at least one object in the array and this evaluates into true. Next method is filter. The filter basically takes an array and filters and con uh, returns a new array. And the first line returns only even elements of the array. We have one, two, three, four and finally after executing the filter, we have two and four. And the second, second example returns the array of elements which has location New York, and it returns only one element, which is John. Next method is map. Now the map basically uh, maps each element of the array into a new element and returns new array. And in this case, we're mapping each element into its square, and we have this newer array. Second example, we have a uh, area of objects and we want to map each object into its name. And finally, after executing this map, we have John, Jane and Mary. So we mapped each object from the er original array into its name. And we have array of strings instead of array of objects. Radius. This radius basically uh, reduces the num all elements into a single value. And in this case, the radius just calculates the sum of the array. The first ar argument of the radius is the accumulator, which basically accumulates all values. And the second element uh, of the callback is the current. Next example, we can pass initial value to the reduce. And the initial value in this case is zero. Without initial value, accumulator will be the first element on the first execution of the callback and the current will be second and uh, this will be continued. So if you pass the pass initial value to the callback, the accumulator will be initial value. And in this case, this is more safe version to calculate sum of x's in this array of objects. Let's have a look on the example from Mozilla Developer Network. So, the following line basically works fine and this returns 42. But the next line returns an object, x corresponds to 22 instead of returning a number 22. So, this happens when you don't pass the initial value on the reduce. And the uh, third example, it throws even type error because there are no elements on the array and if you don't pass initial value and the array is empty, it throws the error. Let's pass initial value minus infinity. So we pass minus infinity as a second argument. So better will be if we map our uh, area of objects into area of numbers. So we are basically map this uh, into an array which has 22 and 42 and then we are executing reduce which finally gives us what we want. Let's see filter map and reduce together. We have array of orders and we want to basically calculate the total cost of orders of all orders for user Jane. First, we are 
executing filter. And we are filtering all users which has user Jane. And this finally uh, gives us a two element array for user Jane. Then we are mapping the array of objects into array of numbers. And this gives us this result, 35 and 20. And finally, we are executing reduce with initial value 0. And finally, this gives us 55. Reduce can also be used to convert multidimensional array into a single dimensional. So we are basically taking each element of the array and concatenating with the accumulator. Ne reduce write. This basically uh, works like a reduce but in a reverse order. So in this, in the previous example, we had the final result was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And right now we have 4, 5, 2, 3, 0, 1. So this also makes the array flat, but in a reverse order, okay? And to make an array flat, there is a better method added in recent version of ES, uh, of ES9, I think. So this makes an array flat, and the method is called flat. Pretty simple. And it has also a possibility to pass additional arguments. Like if you don't pass anything, it will make uh, the first subarray uh, it will take out the elements from the first sub-array. It's a, like a flat level, flat nesting level. And on the on this example where we're passing to, we are flatting the on two sub-levels. And if we want to make the array fully flat, we need to pass there three or infinity or higher number. Flat map. This basically is an equivalent of executing map and then flat. Okay, so the um, first example, the first block, the code on the first block basically is equivalent to the code of the second block. You can pause the video and understand this better. For each, this is I think the most common method and you are using this every day. So this made our life much easier because we don't need to keep track this let i and so on and printing all elements of the array is really simple. Okay, but it has one gacha what you need to know. If, if you have sparse values on the array, the for each doesn't print them. And in this case, as you see, the element at index 2 was completely skipped because it, it was empty. Fill. This fills the array with number, and it also has possibility to pass second and third arguments uh, to indicate from which position until which position you want to fill the array. On the first example, we are filling the, uh, the whole array with 4, and we have this result. On the second example, we are filling array with 5 from position 1, and you see the result. And on the third example, we are filling the array with 0 from position 2 until position 4, and you see the result. If you have an array and you want to fill the array with empty objects, this, is, this can be done like this. Find. This is also a really common method and you are probably using it really often. This finds an element and returns the found element. If the element wasn't found, it returns undefined. Let's say that we have a callback is prime, and is prime uh, checks whether the element is prime or not. For the first air execution, it will return undefined, but for the second execution, it will return 7. Let's say that we want to find an element which has name John. So using this code, we can do and find this element, and this will return an object. Find index. This basically searches the element and finds its index and returns it. So on the first execution, this returns minus 1. On the second execution, this returns 2. This is the index of the prime number. And on this example, it just returns 0 because there is the person with name John is at position 0. Includes. That basically checks if the element is in, exists in the array. So this returns true because 3 exists in, in the array. The second line returns false because the second argument of the includes basically is the start position from which the JavaScript should check if the element exists 
in array or not. And from position three, which is four, there is no, there are no elements, uh, no three in the array, and this evaluates into false. And this evaluates into true because from position two there exists three in the array. The shorthand version will be like three in array or six in array. So six doesn't exist in the array and this evaluates into false. If you want to check whether the element exists in array or not, you can easily f put this following uh, statement in your if statement. Entries. Uh, this basically uh, returns a multidimensional array. And the, each subarray basically has length 2. And the first element of the subarray is index and the second element is the element itself. This is uh, useful in cases when you want to use for off loop for late element of array, but you also want to use index. So in this case you can use entries and you have index and element both. And finally copy within. That's really strange method. It basically copies the element from the array into array, but from some position into another position, like on, the, on this example. So we are copying um, elements from position three until position four, but not including four itself, into position zero. So the element from position, uh, which is on position three is this D until position 4, so we don't include 4 itself. So we are basically copying D into position 0, which is A. So we are copying D into A, and we have finally D, B, C, D, and E. And in this example, we are copying everything from position 3 till the end on position 1. So basically we are copying D and E on position 1, which is B. So we would have A, B, a, D, E, D, E. And that's basically the end of the video. Thumbs up if you like, leave a comment, subscribe, and see you in the next time.